Because I am your host, Jay Taylor, and uh, I would like to remind you each and every week, I also am the author of a newsletter, Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks. And uh, for the next couple of weeks or so yet, Chen Lin uh, remains as a partner of mine. He publishes What is Chen Buying? What is Chen Selling? There will be some changes with Chen Lin's uh, service as we start the new year, and, uh, well, uh, subscribers will be alerted to that, of course. But uh, Chen will remain as a good friend of mine, and we will remain uh, professional partners uh, in one way or another, but there will be some changes. Uh, so up until the end of this year, though, you can subscribe uh, to Chen Lin's newsletter by going to miningstocks.com. You can uh, subscribe to my letter or Chen's at miningstocks.com, or you can call our office here in New York at 718 457 uh, 1426. I do want to thank each of you for listening to this show, making it uh, one of the more important, uh, one of the more well listened to shows on the Voice America business channel, and for sure I think it's one of the more important ones. Um, but in any event, um, we want to also encourage you to keep your questions, comments, criticisms, and praises coming along to t- to uh, questions for Taylor at gmail.com, questions for Taylor at gmail.com. And we uh, also uh, want to thank our sponsors for today's show for making this show economically possible. Um, Klondike Gold and RN Resources are today's sponsors. Um, this uh, Today I titled the show, Why Gold is Nearing an Upside Breakout, and I'm very pleased to have with me once again Andrew McGuire. Uh, Dr. Quentin Henning will be with me as well in the second segment, and just in a moment or two, Michael Oliver uh, will chime in as well. Uh, Michael uh, always has a, a lot of important things to say in the near term and in the intermediate term, and uh, he has provided a great deal of insight and comfort to me over the last couple of years, uh, so really pleased to have him with us again. Uh, in the uh, second segment today, as I just mentioned, Dr. Quentin Henning will be with me, and he is the president and CEO of what is my favorite junior gold exploration company, Novo Resources, uh, and then in about a half an hour, Uh, About a half past the hour, I'll be speaking with uh, world-famous precious metals trader Andrew McGuire, who is known for blowing the whistle on the big banks uh, who have been manipulating the gold and silver markets, as uh, the gold antitrust action people have been telling us for many years, and certainly a lot of evidence to that that extent. Those of us on the long side of the gold market have been uh, somewhat disappointed by the price action following the election. You know, the impulse of the markets, as soon as it became apparent Donald Trump would win, uh, was to send gold dramatically higher, and the uh, Dow was sent lower by some six or 800 points. It was pretty dramatic. But then just as suddenly, both markets seemed to reverse course, and ever since, we have been seeing a very weak gold price and an excessively exuberant equity market. It's so, it seems, excessively exuberant to me and a lot of other people. Well, Andrew actually sees the current weakness in the gold market as laying the groundwork for a massive move to the upside. And uh, while Andrew will provide some of us with uh, some knowledge of the gold share fundamentals, it's really good to have Michael with me now uh, to get his take on these on these gold markets and debt markets and equity markets. Thanks for joining me again, Michael. Great to be here, Jake. You know, uh, yesterday you put out a, a really interesting piece on the T-bond market, and you've been following the T-bond market. I've been following what you're saying with bated breath. Every time I see the T-bond market headline come in in my inbox, I want to read it because I know how important this market is. Long-dated U.S. Treasuries are, are certainly, you know, one of the most important markets, if not the most important market in the world, and, and it changes directions, major directions, very, very slowly. I mean, I remember... When we started this bull market in the T-bond back in the early 80s, Michael, and I'd like to remind people that my first mortgage was a 17.5% mortgage. And then, of course, we've had this long and wonderful bull market if you're owning T-bonds. Um, however, your work recently suggested that we are entering probably a major turn, a, mar- a major bear market turn. I have that right, don't I? Well, you got it right, yes. And um, it's... Uh I suspect it's a long-term trend change as well. The um, And it got excessive at the end, just like any bull markets, not any, but a lot of bull markets get excessive at the end. They go into blow-off phases, you know, where they're vertical. In the case of T-bonds, they went basically vertical, meaning yields collapsed. And we didn't go to zero like the Japanese and the Germans, but or sub-zero, but, we, you know, we got close. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, 
It's changed trend. Our, our trend change point for T-bond futures was 166 area a couple of months ago as they came down from the high 160s into the mid 160s. I broke too much long-term momentum structure going back years that said to me, okay, it's over. Now, since then, we've dropped into, the, in a matter of a few months, we've dropped into the high 140s. Right now, it's trading about 151, 150 area, slightly off the low. Uh, <clears throat> I think before this particular first leg of decline is over, we'll see T-bonds under under 140. Mm. But in the mid-process of this collapse that we're in right now, my shorter-term and intermediate-term stuff says beware of a very sharp counter-trend rally potential. And I think it's going to happen. It, it almost looks destined. Uh, and I, I, I change the numbers daily because the, the averages change daily that I'm measuring against. And right now, basically, bonds at 151, if you pop them up a point or two, they're going to go up. And I think they could go up sharply, like into the upper 150s. Now, that doesn't change the long-term trend. That just throws an interruption into that new trend change. But it could be sharp. Now, when you sit back and think about it, well, that's not going to happen in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Much like if you look at a chart of uh, the financial sector ETFs, uh, since the point where bonds had a... Uh, a sharp spike up after the election, then a collapse uh, yeah. in price. The VFH, for example, the Vanguard uh, Vanguard Financial uh, ETF, exploded. In fact, it is the strongest sector. So I'm picking on. I'm literally picking on the strongest sector of the stock market over the last several weeks has been financials, mm -hmm. not tech, mm -hmm. not energy. Energy has been strong all year, but violently strong has been the financials. So, okay, we can come up with reasons and explanations. Fine, but it looks inverse. When I run uh, momentum studies to the T-bond market. So it looks to me like the leader on the upside that we've just seen, the financial sector, is in inverse position to the T-bonds. So if I'm right about the T-bonds having a sharp counter-trend rally, it's likely, according to my work, you're going to have a sharp sell-off in the financial sector and no doubt in the market. Mm -hmm. I don't think the T-bonds will produce that rally in a void. Mm -hmm. It will be connected to other rallies. I also suspect that if that occurs, which I think it will, it will be coincident with a gold rally and a euro rally, mm -hmm. meaning a dollar sell-off, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so I think all these things are interconnected, and I, my focus right now mostly is on that biggest of all markets, it's the T, as you said, the T-bond market. It's far right. bigger than the stock market. That monster turns for an 8- to 10-point rally. It will not occur in a void. There will no. be connectivity. All right. Well, it certainly makes sense because, uh, you know, I mean, at least as long as people still have confidence in the dollar-based international monetary system, money will flow from the equity markets back into that, stay inside the system into the T-bonds or mm -hmm. into treasuries of one, one duration mm -hmm. or another, right? So, I, I, Yes, that, that's, I, I think the connectivity there is, is too good. I think it, right now it's inverse still. In other words, stocks up, bonds down. I think that will change over the next year or so. But right now, if you get a T-bond rally, I think uh, you can, without even looking at the S&P, my bet is it would be in decline as well it, as the T-bonds go up. So, my, so, But the, cl the clarity of the technicals is in the bonds right now. It's super clear to me that it looks like a turn to the upside is, is literally a point or two above the, the recent highs. All right, All right. As you point out so so clearly in your work, and uh, folks, it's MSA OliverMSA.com, OliverMSA.com. Uh, if you really care to to get a sense of of comfort or understanding of where the the likelihood of which direction, major direction, markets are going to head, I don't know of any uh, any service that's better, at least from my perspective, than Michael's has been. Uh, showing you that uh, momentum and structure that really gives you some comfort. Well, what would be the driver here then? Would it be the equity markets finally, uh, you know, people starting to get scared for one reason or another, uh, saying taking their profits, uh, you know, would but, like you know, to have an argument against that. Is this so yeah. obvious that it is, you know, maybe it's wrong. Uh, nobody's going to take profits this year, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, uh -huh. why would you? I mean, if you're going to have a better tax year next year, then you should hold off till next year. Well, so that's right a now, good everybody who's long stocks is so comfortable that it's impossible to have a sell-off this year. Well, uh -huh. sometimes markets sell off not because of selling, but the lab absence of buying. Right. Particularly if you've been vertical for three weeks. So when you look at a price chart, for example, and if it's gone vertical and you turn it down, there's no support. There's no ledges. There's, you know, it's just thin up, thin down. So... 
Uh, yes, I agree. No one in his right mind would take a profit this year if he could take it in a few weeks at a better tax advantage. But, mm-hmm. uh, that argument is, is a nice argument, but it doesn't take selling to take a market down. So right, and I, to buying. Yeah. right. I saw, in fact, somewhere this morning, uh, notice that, in fact, there's almost a, a record small amount of cash on the sidelines from the, from the big funds and so forth. So who knows? Oh, well, really? I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah, so that so that would be you know going along with what you're saying. Who knows for sure? I mean, which, uh, sometimes it's best. You know, you, you, you're right well, to stay on the, the right side of the market until you're wrong. And so who knows? Well, there's a but, problem with a sell-off in the market right now, and that's this: mm-hmm. uh, when we change quarter and change year, which is in you know hand, a couple handfuls of days, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the numbers that I use to measure annual momentum, quarterly momentum, will change dramatically. Such that right now we're trading in the 2260s, 2270s on the S&P. Uh, you better not get it back to 2200 or lower next year. I'm talking about three percentage points, actually uh-huh. less. Uh, if you get a sell-off that causes you to be back to 2200 or lower in the new quarter, in the new year, you uh-huh. stuck your foot through some stuff that could, could uh-huh. pull you down. So... Uh, it's one thing to have a near-term sell-off. The other is when does it occur and does it domino into larger factors? And there's the wow. distinct potential that that could happen as well. Wow, with a mere 3%, which isn't hard yeah, to well, imagine. 60 points. <laughs> 60 you know, points. any kind of disappointments <laughs> that, uh, in Donald Trump's promises uh, could easily uh, achieve that, I would think. But who knows? Well, Michael, one more question before we let you go. Well, gold has been languishing you know, in this happy uh, in this happy moment for Donald Trump, this honeymoon uh, experience mm-hmm. uh, that he's having, and the markets are you know have become very exuberant. It seems um, gold hasn't done so well. What sort of level in gold would you be looking at to say, well, maybe maybe I'm not maybe I was wrong in being as bullish as I was. And then what uh, would you well, do? We got bullish at eleven forty to eleven sixty. Now we got bullish also on GDX at fifteen and a half. Right now it's 2021, okay? So it's holding much better than the gold is itself. And we emphasize GDX, the the miners, as opposed to bullion. But 1138 monthly close on gold. I don't want to see that. But barring that, uh, I I, I remain positive. Uh, That would cause me to go to major neutral, not negative. Okay. Uh, Oh, okay. I don't expect it. Yeah. Um, and, and I do think if the bonds turn, probably the euro turns. Watch the euro very carefully next year. Right now it's trading in the 106s, 107 zone. It's been as low as 105. If you see it at 108 next year, it's coming out of here, upside. Mm-hmm. And the dollar is going downside. So that's another mm-hmm. potential positive for gold. Watch also the Bloomberg Commodity Index. It doesn't know that gold pulled back. Mm-hmm. It's near the highs of the year. Commodities are broken out on annual momentum. How come that's going on if we're deflating? If gold right. is saying we're going to deflate again, how come Bloomberg Commodity Index does not know that? Yeah. Uh, and, wa- and watch the grains next year. They're going to be the leader. Well, we certainly will hope to have you around so we can keep an eye on those markets, Mike. I want to thank you again. It it's really is uh, reassuring to me in a way because you would turn only neutral if we saw that sort of unusual number at 1138. Uh, and in my way of thinking, it's a good time for people to start thinking of accumulating probably. You know, it never feels like accumulating at the bottom of a market. Uh, it always feels like uh, jumping on when everybody is having a party, but we know from history and from experience it's better sometimes to look the other way. And it's also better uh, to rely on people like yourself, professionals like yourself, who do some good, good honest work uh, in the markets and helping us uh, foresee the structure and the momentum in those markets. So thank you very much for being with us again. Michael, I'll look to do it again next week, hopefully if you're available. Thank you, Jay. 